Good afternoon and thanks for joining us in the kitchen with Across the Fence. I'm Judy Simpson and I'm joined by my friends Carolyn Peake from Williamstown along with Deb Plumley and Lynn Jarvis, both from South Hero. Our first order of business is to let Nancy Littlefield from Milton know that she's the winner in our free drawing for the cookbook with Paul Newman's favorite recipes. Congratulations, Nancy. Now this month, one of you viewers will win the 170 page book entitled Cooking with Children. With summer vacation just around the corner, we'll have more time to spend with the children and grandchildren children and this book has some great recipes to introduce them to the wonderful world of cooking. So get a paper and pencil ready and I'll let you know how to enter the free drawing at the end of our show. Now our theme for today's show is rhubarb recipes. Rhubarb officially became a fruit on July 17, 1947 when the U.S. Customs Court of Buffalo, New York declared it so. Well since rhubarb's principal use is in the kitchen as a fruit and since fruit carries a lower import duty than a vegetable, it seemed the practical thing to do. Most scientists, however, consider rhubarb a vegetable. Well, fruit or vegetable, <laughs> it's used to create a variety of delicious recipes, and Deb is here to share a few treats with us. Why, thank you. Sure. And what a nice way to celebrate spring with a collection of recipes using rhubarb. I'm going to start, first of all, and I'm going to hold it up a little bit here, with this walnut rhubarb bread that came from the King Arthur Flower website. In addition to the usual batter ingredients of flour, baking soda, sugar, eggs, and oil, you add some nutmeg and lemon zest to the batter. And I think that gives a nice tangy complement. And the rhubarb that's used in this recipe is cooked before you mix it into the batter. And I think that just adds to the nice moisture content. This recipe makes a nine by five loaf. My family likes it sliced while the loaf is slightly warm, wonderful thing to have for breakfast, and I think it would also be tasty with some homemade jam. Now my viewer recipe was first presented on Across the Fence in 1987 and was from Nancy Sheldon of Swanton. I'm going to spoon some out here while I'm talking about it. If her family's watching, perhaps they all have memories of her maple rhubarb ragamuffins. This is so easy to make and so good. In your pan, you warm some maple syrup and some butter in the oven. While that's warming, you make a quick batter, fold in some diced rhubarb. I added a little bit of cinnamon to the batter as well. Drop that by spoonfuls onto the warm maple syrup. Put it back in the oven, and in about 20 minutes, you've got a fabulous dessert. This is so wonderful. So this is the viewer recipe, and these are maple rhubarb ragamuffins. So I hope you give these a try. Now, rhubarb is not just for dessert. So let's talk about a few things you can do with rhubarb for main dishes. I'm going to start with this rhubarb vinaigrette. This is so easy to make. I know you're going to want to keep it in the fridge to have handy. You cook chopped rhubarb in a little bit of water until it's softened. Put it in a blender. Add maple syrup, Dijon mustard, some red wine vinegar, and poppy seeds, and you've got a great vinaigrette, perfect for a spring salad. And what complements the flavor of rhubarb but strawberries? So try serving some strawberries alongside the um, salad and add some chopped walnuts, and you've got a wonderful spring salad to enjoy. Now spring also means it's grilling season. So the next time you grill up some chicken, some pork, some fish, you might want to give this a try. This is a rhubarb sweet onion sauce. And I think the tartness of the rhubarb goes well with the sweetness of the onions. Again, this is fast and easy. You simply cook some chopped rhubarb, some sliced onions until soft. Just use a little bit of water. Add some red wine vinegar and some brown sugar. This makes a hefty pint-sized jar, as you can see, and this keeps very well in the fridge, and it's a great flavor complement. And Carolyn, I can see out of the corner of my eye this wonderful looking chocolate cake. I know, doesn't that look good? <laughs> I'm going to step aside and let you share that with the viewers, but I'm going to leave the whipped cream Thank here you. for you. All right. <laughs> 
Well, it was very nice going out into the garden and picking my own rhubarb. It is huge. And I do want to remind people of one thing. If you're picking your own rhubarb and you have not done it before, do not keep the leaves because the leaves are not good for you. But you keep those beautiful stalks. You can make a lot of things. I'm going to start out with, and I'm not sure how this is pronounced, but Bafina something like that. Anyways, it's made with pork, and it has a nice sauce that you put over it. You, you brown your pork first, the pork, pork tenderloin. I'm going to just set a couple of those pieces right out there. And you, while it's cooking, you baste it with a sauce that's made with rhubarb and golden raisins, um, a number of spices and everything. And here is a little bit more to serve over it. So it is a really good you know, main dish sort of thing. Now, my viewer recipe actually came from two of our viewers. It came from Barbara Witham from Montpelier and Helen Davis from Duxbury, and it is this rhubarb bread. It makes two loaves. I will warn you, it doesn't keep well. It took two days for my husband and I to eat the first loaf, so it's, it's not a good keeper. But it is a keeper for your recipe books. And I'll just set a piece of that. It's got rhubarb chopped up all through it. Nice, typical rhubarb bread, but very, very good. Now, to go with our meal that we've started here, I have a fresh summer fruit salad, and it is stuffed with fruit because it has grapes and oranges and strawberries and apples and peaches and plums and cherries and blueberries and just a really nice bunch of fruit and then you make a sauce with rhubarb and sugar and water and you pour that over it and let it set a couple of hours or even overnight so that the flavors just all come together so nice. So that's a good fruit salad to go with your meal. Now I have two desserts. One of them is a chocolate cake and I'm gonna pull out a piece, I hope. And this, it starts out with rhubarb on the bottom and then you add some, you sprinkle some uh, jello some strawberry jello over the top of it, then pour the cake over that and bake it. And I have put a chocolate frosting onto it, but you could put just a glaze or, you know, whatever you happen to like. And lastly, I have a rhubarb orange cream pie. Mm. And this is good because I managed to make like one and a half out of the recipe because I needed a bigger pie plate. But we had some of the, the results. Whoops, and it's gonna fall apart on me. Oh well, it's still good. <laughs> it's totally falling apart. <laughs> it has the, the pie crust on the bottom, and the, then the rhubarb, and it has uh, like a, almost like a custard filling over it and then you bake it and I'm going to swipe a little bit of of uh, the whipped cream here and if the pie were laying there nice the way it should be oh. it would look really good <laughs> but anyway this is a, a rhubarb custard pie and it is excellent uh, even though it fell apart, I can smell it. It's wonderful, yes, wonderful flavor. Yes, yes. And, and once you eat it, it's all mushed up anyway. <laughs> we leave it at that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carolyn. Uh, before I show my recipes, I want to mention some of our loyal viewers. They include 81 years young Irene Marsh from Brushton, New York, Barbara Roberts, and her 91-year-old mom from Heinsberg, and Angela Borowski and her, get this, 98-year-old mom from Waitsfield. Diane Buska from Burlington and Patty McPherson from Lunenburg, who have both been watching us since they were little girls, and Chris Mahoney from North Faston. Uh, thank you all, we enjoy your cards and notes. And this is my first recipe, it's my rhubarb pork chop casserole. 
not too hard to make. First you cook the chops and then remove them to a plate. Then you moisten the breadcrumbs and the cooking juice and put them in the bottom of the pan. Then you combine some rhubarb sugar, flour and cinnamon and sprinkle it over the top. Put your chops back on and a little more of the rhubarb over that and you are set to go. And the recipe, you bake it at 350 for about an hour. And I think it's something your family and friends will enjoy, even if they tell you they don't like rhubarb. I hear that a lot, but once they try it, it's not all that bad. Now to go with their scones, uh, to go with their chops, here are my rhubarb scones. And this is made with a combination of whole wheat flour, uh, your regular white flour, spices, whipped cream, and some finely chopped rhubarb, all coming together to create these delicious scones that are full of vitamin C. And yes, vitamin C is very plentiful in rhubarb. Make 16 for those of you who are cooking for one or two, they freeze well, so you'll be happy to hear that. Now, you might want to dress up these scones with some homemade jam. And here are a couple of my favorites. Now, the first one is this strawberry rhubarb jam. And this, like Carolyn, came in from two of you viewers, Maxine Tyler from Benton, New Hampshire, and Mary Lou Benoit from Randolph. And it has just four ingredients. There's rhubarb, sugar, or crushed pineapple in here, and strawberry jello. And you just put it together, and it comes out to this delicious apricot strawberry rhubarb jam. I'm getting thinking about my apricot here. And they say they both give this away as Christmas gifts. And wouldn't you like to get a jar of that? Now, this is my apricot jam. It's an uh, apricot strawberry jam, believe it or not. And I put in here some rhubarb so you don't really see too much of the strawberry, but it combines the dried apricots, the rhubarb, and a, an orange, a little bit of strawberry, and sugar. Both are very easy to make and um, keeps well if you put them in a jar and seal them properly so that you could give this away as a Christmas gift. Now we're going to move on to the favorite dessert of the ones that I'm showing you today. And this has been in my family for many, many years. And um, when I used to come home from college in the springtime, my mother would always have a bowl of this waiting for me. It's a rhubarb cake pudding. Now it's quite easy to make. Uh, first, uh, you cook up some rhubarb and combine it with sugar, flour, milk, eggs. You bake it for about an hour and it comes out with this cake-like topping that you can see and a nice creamy rhubarb filling on the bottom. Just delicious and if you make one of my recipes, I hope you'll try this one. It's unique and delicious. Now I'm going to move on to a couple of viewer recipes. Uh, this first one comes from Roberta Maltese from Rutland, she calls it simple as pie, and it's been in her family for about 20 years. Uh, you put all the ingredients into the same uh, baking dish, in this case it's a pie plate, bake 30 to 40 minutes, then along with the rhubarb, there's flour, sugar, and egg in here, and chopped walnuts, and we're all sharing this whipped cream from Deb. Top it with a little whipped cream, and you are in for a delicious treat. And my last recipe comes from June Jones, and she lives over in Williston, and it's her rhubarb squares, and she says they're quick, easy, and very good at potlucks. I just cooked this so it was a little too warm to take out, but anyway, um, I like it because you put in the box of uh, yellow cake mix all the other ingredients, and so all you really need to make this, Judy, is this dish, a spoon to dip it out and a knife to cut the rhubarb. Simple as that. Easy. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah. great. What a great collection of recipes from all three of our chefs. To get a copy of the recipes, you can go online to the Across the Fence website. Go to uvm.edu slash extension and click on the link to Across the Fence. You'll find the recipes on the left-hand side of the webpage. To get the recipes by mail, send $2 in a stamped self-addressed business size envelope to Rhubarb Recipes, Box 188, South Hero, Vermont, 05486. And remember, if you 
you are ordering the recipes to include the two dollars in a self-addressed stamped envelope. Your envelope will be used to uh, enter the drawing for the Cooking with Children cookbook. If you're not ordering today, you can still be part of our free cookbook drawing. To enter, just send along your name and address. Good luck to all of you. Thanks to all of our chefs. We'll see them back here on July 7th when our theme will be Eating Light. In the meantime, we look ahead to Father's Day on June 19th and send our best wishes to all of you dads out there. For all of us here, I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.